Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us for today's Hamlin Leo Lecture, The City is University, Developing Engaged Citizens. My name is Molly Glevy, and I work in the Alumni Relations Office, and I'm so pleased to have you join us today for a Leo Lecture that includes faculty, staff, uh, recent alum, current students, very, very soon to graduate students. Uh, we're happy to have you here for our eighth Leo Lecture of the academic year. And before we get started, a few housekeeping items for us all to know. You will be muted and your camera will be off for today's presentation. If you have a question for any of our speakers, please use the Q&A icon in your Zoom dashboard on your screen. Um, and go ahead and put questions in as they come up. Uh, you don't feel like you need to wait till the very end of the session. If you have a question about the logistics of today's webinar, please use the chat icon in your Zoom dashboard. Uh, and also, there may be a few points today where our panelists asks alums to share their own experiences. So you can go ahead and put that into the chat as well, or the Q&A. We'll find it wherever you put it. And finally, be patient with us as we are presenting from a variety of locations. We all know how this goes now uh, in our Zoom environment. And with that, I'd like to introduce our panel. And panelists, you can turn your cameras on now if you like. First, you do, class of 21, served as Vice President of Husk, the Hanlon Undergraduate Student Congress in 2019-2020, as a co-founder and program manager of the Future Leaders of Local American Fellowship, and currently serves as an operations intern for Ignite National, the largest nonpartisan nonprofit organization in the country dedicated to empowering young women to become the next generation of political leaders. She has also served as a new student mentor for students in Professor, Professor Scheibel's first year seminar. Ann Rasher, my colleague in the Career Development Center, also class of 2013, is the Assistant Program Director of Internships for undergraduate students at Hamlin University. She has served as a campus colleague in Professor Scheibel's first year seminar since 2015. Jim Scheibel, Professor of Practice in Hamlin School of Business and former Mayor of St. Paul. And finally, Kaya Ziegler is the current president of Husk and a member of the class of 22. She also asks, acts as the Donations and Engagements Coordinator at Project for Pride in Living, a Minneapolis nonprofit organization that provides career readiness and affordable housing to marginalized communities. And with that, I will turn it over to our panel to discuss the city as university developing engaged citizens. Good morning, everyone. Um, what a week, um, just been an incredible week. And I think today's topic, we couldn't have picked it any better about developing engaged citizens because if there's ever been a week to call for the engagement and being citizens, it's certainly been this week. Um, alums, I, I, as we sort of share our experiences of with one first year seminar and some things ham at, happening at Hamlin, I encourage you to sort of think about your Hamlin days and just other times in your life that sort of, I don't know if one can be prepared for the kind of week we had, but it was a week where we learned about democracy, we saw democracy at work, and it really called for us to be engaged citizen. Um, Earlier this morning, um, believe it or not, I was on a call, um, some of my high school classmates, we get together once a month. And this, mo this month we had um, our sophomore English teacher. Um, but Flav, I hopefully remember some of the English he taught me and I think he does too. But what I recall is Flav coming into the class with a shirt with blood on it um, from he had been marching in Alabama during the civil rights movement and came back and showed us and was just very active. And um, like I say, I think his teaching me English hopefully had some effect, but I'll never forget that shirt and I'll never forget the work that Flav did. So as I said, it's really been quite the week. I like to say it's been a week spotlighting and focusing on what does it mean to be a democratic nation. Um, we saw 
I'm sure you join me in just marveling at the conscientious and the work that the jurors did. Um, we, we saw people expressing uh, often joy and, and, and thanks um, in, on 38th and Chicago and downtown Minneapolis. Um, we also were reminded of the issue with, with Dante's death and that service this week. Um, I'm sure you had a number of conversations. Um, it was a little difficult with Zoom. I mean, I really, this is the kind of week you really want people around, but I'm sure we've all had conversations on Zoom or the phone um, and other, um, other areas, just sort of, sort of sharing with one another, um, being with one another, trying to bring understanding. And one of the messages I saw this week is, what do we do next? How do we act as engaged citizens going forward? Yesterday, um, President Miller um, spoke. Uh, we had our honors celebration, and congratulations to you, one of the honorees. Um, but at President Miller talked about um, one: our students want to make a change, um, and so I think one of the questions we always sort of say: what do we do to encourage people to be change change agents? Um, we also, she, um, President Miller talked about preparing students uh, for leadership and a lifetime of service. Um, if I could, um, it's a good time for us to recall our mission. We have that slide. So I know as alum, you all know this. So it's our mission to create a diverse and collaborative community of learners dedicated to the development. And this is a part I really want us, or we'll be focusing on the dedicated to the development of a student's knowledge, values, and skills for successful lives. And this is, um, we're gonna really focus today on successful lives of leadership. You'll see some amazing examples today. Scholarship, yes, that's important, but also service. And, and I think sometimes we think of the academics and scholarship, but Hamlin's mission is really about, also includes the leadership and service. Um, and it's through the first year seminar that all of us are involved that we wanna share with you how that is, I'd say, a training ground uh, for service. Um, so the um, FISEM is the city as university, Hamlin without walls. Uh, I even asked some of you, um, Hamlin's location is one of the decision points, um, part of what's attractive. And students do want to make a difference um, in, their, um, in, in their community. And um, our first year seminar, um, I would say, is a laboratory for that. And the laboratory is really the city of St. Paul. So well, I, I talked about Ed Flavin, who influenced me as a high school student. Part of the FISEM, and we'll talk more about how it operates and some sort of the key assignment, but the, um, the student, uh, or St. Paul's a great laboratory for learning, I like to say about democracy, about building community. Um, and so guests we have include Debbie Montgomery, who was the first black woman police officer in the city of St. Paul. Um, as a high school student at Central, she was marching when, and heard Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech. Um, huge influence. Um, students always loved Debbie and her story. I mean, she, she was a first at so many things. Um, keeping up with the news, how important was that this week? Um, Jesse Van Berkel, who's a young reporter who covered St. Paul, is always a favorite of the class and always just insults on them. If you're gonna be active, if you're going to be engaged, you've got to read, you've got to be informed, um, including some, many of us would say newspapers, but uh, very important. We have Kazua Kong, Kong, Kong Tao, who is a leader in the Academy of Excellence among school. Um, so education, um, and we'll be hearing more about education from Kaya in a little bit, making sure we have good schools. Um, June Burquist, um, probably many of you in the audience today have been to Nina's Cafe on Selby 
and Western. Um, June is always um, talks about um, dozens of books have been written there, but she's just a real community community builder. Um, John Bennett, who is a banker um, for you St. Paul people, he's a former King Boreas, so we covered the celebrations of the city and also serves on the Port Authority. So part of this looking at the city of St. Paul is how, how is the city developed? How do we provide business and job op opportunities? Um, and at the local level, um, Melissa Cortez, who was a community organizer for Mid Midway Hamlin, we would go over. So the city is a great laboratory, has great resources for us to learn about how we're active, um, people that inspire other people and learn about the issues. Um, so Anne, why don't you talk about sort of a little more of the framework of the FISEM and also introduce what we call our major assignment. Absolutely, thanks Jim. Uh, I mean, I can't really say it better than Jim did of how we approach this class and the goals of showing students the community that Hamlin is located in. It's absolutely about getting to know campus. That's a goal of FISEMs in general across the university and I've included some kind of nuts and bolts on this slide. Uh, but for us, we really approach this FISEM making sure that the, the new students that are joining us have a really great baseline of how to make the most of their time at Hamlin, not only on campus, but off. And so a big part of that is the team that we have supporting the first year students in our class. And this is true of every FISAM on campus, but I'm really happy today with who we've got on this panel because we're an example of an entire FISAM right now. So Jim is the wonderful professor who serves as all of our students' academic advisor as soon as they arrive on campus. So it means that every new Hamlin student has a direct connection to ask questions about courses and majors and logistics and just having that go-to person, as well as just a fabulous instructor for the course. Then everyone also has a campus colleague who's someone like me where I'm not a faculty member, I'm not a student, I happen to be an alum, which is pretty great. Uh, but I'm another resource on campus, um, serving in the Career Development Center in particular. I'm sure Kaya and you can <laughs> reinforce that I talk about my office a lot and the importance of doing the most that you can during your time to help make sure that you're opening as many doors as possible for after graduation. And so I work with students and present within class to make sure that our students are aware of all the campus resources available to them, not just the Career Development Center, but also academic advising, the Global Engagement Center, the Wesley Center, the Hedgeman Center, making sure that students can see all of this as accessible and kind of know where to go and have some familiar faces. But the most pivotal person, I think, especially in those first initial weeks of being on campus is the new student mentor. And so we were lucky enough to have you as one of our students her first year on campus and then she came back the next year to be our new student mentor for Kaya's class and so you came back as kind of you know she she'd been there done that successfully navigated the first year experience and there to share her wealth of knowledge and perspective with new students as you know almost like a big sister or just you know a friendly face when students are trying to get a feel for well how should I interact with staff how should I interact with this professor being able to connect with a student right away makes things just transition a little bit smoother, which then helps us to address the goals of our course. Um, so again, getting students out into St. Paul uh, is our main one once we get everyone comfortable on campus, which is why Professor Scheibel and I put together the Ward Project. Um, because we were noticing we're bringing all these wonderful speakers into class and we're talking about St. Paul and all these different communities and neighborhoods, but it means so much more when you can see them in person. And so Hamlin happens to be located in the fourth ward of St. Paul. There are seven wards in St. Paul, if you aren't familiar. And so with this project, we break up our course of first year students. There's typically about 18, 19 students in our class every fall. And we break them up to go visit the other six wards beyond Hamlin. Because um, we're getting to know a ward four really well by just living here. And that way we can have students explore the rest of the city. Uh, we encourage them to do so via public transportation so that everyone knows how to use the bus and light rail before they graduate. So that's going to be a big part of making the most of your time. Uh, and then also just getting to see these communities in person. And so through that project, in addition to the kind of field trip component of taking pictures, eating at restaurants, exploring local hubs and, uh, you know, places of just communion, I should say, 
uh, students also dig into demographics and finding out some of the you know, data behind neighborhoods and different areas of St. Paul to be able to do comparisons. And this all culminates in these groups of students being able to present their findings, reflections, and experiences, not only to their peers in our FISM, but also to the council member for their chosen ward. Uh, so we bring it full circle of making it really accessible. Like, here's your council member right here in class. Let's talk to them about what you experienced in your, you know, adventures across St. Paul. Um, so this is something that we really look forward to in class and is a big culmination that helps students really tie everything together as we talk about all the different pieces and parts that make a city and make this community that we're introducing them to. Um, on this next slide, I've pulled a couple different pictures from both Kaya and Yu's ward projects um, when they were presenting them to classes in their respective years. I'd love if the two of you could share just a highlight or two of your reflections on this project and what it maybe meant to you or however you'd like to approach it. I can go first. <laughs> um, so my group, um, is now still some of my closest friends at Hamlin. Um, and we did Ward 5 together and it was so fun. We got to like go out and actually use the bus system. And I think for a couple of us in the group, it was our first time. So it was fun to be able to experience that together um, and then actually go out into the community and see some of these places we were talking about in class. Um, and then of course, enjoy some great food um, as well. And the picture on, um, where we're, we're on a bus is actually our whole class. We went together on a field trip to a theater. And so that kind of helped prepare us to be able to use the bus system um, on our own uh, without Anne and Jim. So um, it was such a great project. And then to actually be able to meet the council member of the ward we were talking about was just, it made um, being engaged an even bigger level of where I felt like these local leaders are accessible and, you know, that's something I could even possibly do in the future. Yes. Hi, everyone. You do she, her, hers pronouns. I completely agree with Kaya. Uh, for my word project, we went to Ward 2. Um, so a bunch of us hopped on the bus and went down to Ward 2. We went to um, the state capitol. We went to technically the cathedrals in Ward 1, but we didn't know. We mixed it up. Uh, but we went anyways. Uh, we went to restaurants in Ward 2. We went and explored downtown and just made a whole day out of it. We forgot it was an assignment. Um, <laughs> so And it was super fun. Um, and just exploring you know, the city and seeing parts of, you know, as someone who never lived here before, it was really nice to just go to these places, and explore the city with people that I knew and were very comfortable with. Um, that's just at the Science Museum with that big dinosaur, because Sadie's favorite place in the world is the Science Museum. So we made sure to go before it closed. Um, and yeah, it was a really great time. And yeah, we went to the theater all together on the bus. If you ever are up for a challenge, try rallying 20 college students on a bus. Like it's, uh, <laughs> it's very fun, um, very, very stressful. But yes, it was so much fun. Yeah, and what we also love about this project in the class in general, and kind of as Jim has alluded to, we're all about making sure that students can see being an engaged citizen as an accessible option, that you can start in the smallest ways. And sometimes it just starts with getting to know where you are and starting to make connections with representatives and community leaders and realizing that they're just people too. And they're really excited to not only talk about themselves, but also to you know bring some new energy into those conversations. And I love that we're able to foster those relationships in our class. Um, something else I'd love for the two of you to share, especially Kaya looking at, you know, where you're headed right now with this upcoming election, but for both of you, when you're thinking about what it means to be a civically engaged individual, what did that look like before you joined our class and how has that changed or how has the class kind of put you on the path that you are finding yourself on now? can start. Um, before, I think like, you know, I did a walkout at my high school my senior year and, you know, the kind of the only thing I felt that was accessible were, were things that, you know, my friends were also doing. Um, 
And then this class was the first time I had gotten to like actually speak to community leaders um, face to face in like an intimate setting and they wanted to hear what we had to say. Um, and so, and there were also like Mitra um, is the council member for Ward 4 and she's pretty young. And um, I was like, whoa, I could do that someday. And here I am now. This year I'm running for school board in um, the Egan Rosemount Apple Valley School District 196. And this class is really what set me on that trajectory to be able to see myself um, going into local um, politics and government and um, community leading. And so I think about this course a lot as I'm having community conversations about, you know, to, uh, reaching out to high school students so that they know that there's they can be in um, these positions. You know, I didn't get that until college. So making sure that high school and middle school and even elementary school students can see that. Um, and it just like made me realize that I can I can send um, a city council person an email. I could send the mayor an email and they want to hear from us. Um, and so it just really made me feel empowered to be able to actually like use my voice and get out in community um, in a way that I had never even imagined. Yeah, I agree with Kaya. I think that um, before this class, well, given I, I'm also from Northern Minnesota, rural Minnesota, um, but from a young age, I've wanted to run for office since I was seven. So the passion to be a public servant was there for a long time. I didn't have any opportunity to really learn about what it means to be in public service, what it means to be civically engaged. Uh, the only opportunities I had were through like student organizations at my high school doing like supply drives and clothing drives. And while those were impactful in some way, just like didn't water my crops. Like it was just like, wasn't filling my cup. Like I feel like we could do more with our time. So coming to college and being a part of this first year seminar, I realized that being civically engaged isn't those isolated events that you are giving back to the community is just being civically minded and understanding what's going on around you and how to respond is simply being a civically minded person. Um, like now after like four years of, you know, being mentored by Jim and Ann through this course and just living in St. Paul and being an organizer here, when there's, once an event comes, I, I know of it right away and I know exactly how to respond. Um, like when Jim was uh, speaking about earlier, when the murder of Dante Wright uh, occurred in Brooklyn Center, I knew exactly who to call. I knew exactly what I needed to do. I knew exactly who I needed to email to make sure that they were being held accountable. Um, I knew that I needed to run to the store and, and grab protest supplies. And that, that wasn't a thought, a mindset that I would have had before taking this class. Um, and it took not only being in the classroom and learning from these leaders to understand that, it took me being out on the ground doing the work to understand that as well. So it's definitely talking about civic engagement. It's a lot about knowledge and always being a continuing learner and learning from others, but it's also taking that knowledge and applying it to your own experiences. Because if you're just learning about in the classroom and not opening and you know, taking down those walls in your classroom, hand without walls, and implementing them, you really don't understand to the full capacity what it means to be civically engaged. So maybe going when you were looking at different colleges and you selected Hamlin, um, you know, we started. I started off by reminding people about our mission, particularly about leadership um, and and about service. Um, sort of. Stepping back a little bit, what brought you to Hamlin? And, and not just the FISEM, but what other support, what else influenced you to be the incredible two leaders that you are and doing the kind of things? And, and this week also of the passing of Walter Mondale, just you're both amazing public people, public servants. So what brought you to Hamlin and what other parts of Hamlin or organizations sort of prepared you to be that leader, to be service um, oriented. I can jump in for this one, Kai, because you went last time first. Um, I thank you, Jim. Those words mean so much, especially from you who are involved in everything. Like 
<laughs> literally every week I learned of something new you're involved in. Um, we've known each other for four years. Um, I took a very non-traditional route to get to Hamlin. Uh, I think as someone who, you know, worked as a tour guide, like, you know, like most students, you know, tour the school, like the school, go to the school, kind of how it works. Um, when people ask me, like, how did you find Hamlin? I'm like, I never toured Hamlin and I'm a tour guide. Like, it's just so uh, ironic. Um, but I've actually wanted to go to Hamlin since I was like 13 or 14. A uh, dear friend of mine, Marco, was coming to Hamlin and he was a leader on um, in my high school that I really looked up to. And we're actually good friends now. We just talked the other day. Um, and he was coming to Hamlin and I am someone who is spiritual. I'm someone who trusts my gut. And when I heard the name Hamlin and heard him talking about Hamlin and just its mission, its drive and its location, something in my, deep in my soul, honestly, told me that I was meant to be here. Um, But ironically, I never went to tour it because I was like, you know, it's in the heart of St. Paul. It's exactly the location that would be, um, would be a great place for me to, you know, start uh, my career in public service that I wanted to. And during that time, I, you know, like for much of my life, I didn't really go for that dream of being elected official because everyone around me was like, there's no one that looks like you in, in politics. So why should you go for it? So much of my life, no one really knew I wanted to go for it. Um, and it came around to senior year and I was, you know, had this whole other plan going to different school, pursuing psychology, nothing against psychology. We love psychology majors. Uh, it's just not for me. Uh, and going to psychology and, you know, and just pursuing a very, a life that would have been great, but not fulfilling in, in the ways I needed. Um, and I got my acceptance letter from Hamlin. I took it as a sign from the Lord and was like, y'all, I'm going to Hamlin. Uh, and I told my parents and they were not happy because I did not uh, tour it. Um, but, you know, as much as my my uh, path to Hamlin was non-traditional, it was the community here that made me stay. Like once I was here in, Ham- in St. Paul at Hamlin and being welcomed by Jim and Ann, who have been instrumental to my college career um, and being in this community of service and scholarship and leadership and welcoming me with open arms and really showing me the way I, I knew in my heart that I made the right decision. Even when I didn't even know it was the right decision, it was very doubtful. It was the right decision. Um, it worked out perfectly. So I took a very non-traditional route, but I'm very happy with the decision that I made. Yeah, I would say I'm probably one of those traditional students who toured Hamlin multiple times. I actually, I applied to, I think it was like, it was over 10 schools. I was just not finding where I wanted to go. My mom was getting a certificate at Hamlin. So I was like, I don't want to be going to the same place as my mom. She'll be annoying about it. Um, And she was like, just go like, I think you'll really like it. So I went to like an honors day or something like that. And heard President Miller speak um, about Hamlin's mission. And then I listened to a panel of alum uh, who talked about their experience as students and how there was really a focus on service and equity and engagement in our courses, um, like embedded in our coursework. And that was what that was what I found out I was looking for. That's what I wanted um, in my college experience. And so that's exactly what I've gotten at Hamlin. Um, and I'm just so thrilled that I decided to listen to my mom and <laughs> go to those things. And um, and I've gotten to take two courses with Jim and through that met so many different community members. So I came in as a, a I was gonna go human resources. Uh, so I was business management. And, and then um, I took one psychology course and loved psychology. And so now I'm doing a psychology major with business practice and Chinese minors, but still going into public service. So I'm, I'm doing, um, it's that really that full liberal arts experience of that my psychology degree, I learned that does um, really have a huge stake in public service. And so, um, yeah, I feel like there was a second part to Jim's question that maybe neither of us answered. I think there are some questions. Okay, great. Yeah, there's some really great questions here. Um, First off, great to hear the students talk about their first year experience. What kinds of things would they state would be specific examples of being involved with civic engagement? How about examples of being public servant, um, perhaps other than or beyond protesting or being in public? office. Were there any other examples of that public engagement that came to you as a result of this class? 
you want to talk about flag? Yes, I should. Sure. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, yes, that is a great question. Um, something that, you know, Jim mentioned earlier with guest speakers coming into class and talking about their careers and experiences. One of the guest speakers that we had was Rebecca Naker, who is the St. Paul City Councilwoman for Ward 2. Coincidentally, the ward that I did my project on. Um, and she came in the class and she talked to our experiences. And she handed our business card saying, contact me if you want an internship. And I was like, Anne, I need an internship. I am behind. I, everyone else around me has already had plans. And she's like, no, this is talking about internships. Um, but I contacted Rebecca, had a great informational interview, and actually became um, an intern for her for a re-election campaign. Fast forward a year and a half, she gets re-elected, the highest voter turnout in Ward 2's history. Um, her and I got together and she was like, you, I want, I really want to do more with my second term. I was like, what are you talking about, Rebecca? You're doing a lot. Um, and she was like, I really want to devote more time to creating young leaders, to empowering young people to get into, um, local government. So we together created the Future Leaders of Local American Government Fellowship, FLAG Fellowship, which Kaya is a part of. Um, and we have kind of a trifold model where we invite guest speakers in to talk about um, their experiences and helping um, our fellows network with local leaders. We tr we have uh, workshops and, you know, like trainings on different uh, professional and leadership development. And we're trying to implement a, a component on policy practice so that fellows get opportunity to write their own policy proposal on an issue, on a local issue that they're passionate about um, and be able to present it to whoever is directly like involved in that process and like have a direct impact on that issue. So that's a very specific example of how from this course, we were able to create this thing that didn't exist before that's helping um, you know, young people get involved in local government when they never thought of local government before. Um, and I also think too, being a public servant is, you know, in addition to protesting and running for office and stuff, it's just merely understanding to all the resources that are out there for citizens that aren't regularly um, available or like to readily available or talked about, if that makes sense. Like we have so many resources at the local level, at the state level, and particularly at the federal level, which I've worked at and currently work at, um, where, you know, if you are having any issue with a federal agency being immigration issues, being um, you need to get in contact with a federal agency for any reason, you can contact your federal representatives, Congress members, or your senator, and they can help you facilitate that uh, converse, that communication to the federal agency and be able to serve as a representative for you. Um, maybe even expedite your, your case on immigration. That's something that I thought was just common knowledge because I interned for them. And then now that I'm talking to people double, triple my age, they're like, I can call my federal rep for that. I just thought I called them for issues. And it's just those things where like, they're so hidden and they're hidden for a reason. They're very strategically hidden so that communities of color, low income communities, communities that are historically excluded from politics don't have those resources. So um, it can be as specific as creating a whole fellowship for young people, and it can be as broad as just knowing those resources and how to get those to people who you know need them but don't know of them. Yeah, yeah. Flag has been amazing. And, you know, if we hadn't been at Hamlin in this place, it may, may not exist. So um, that's just like crazy to think about. But one of the things that I think about is this past summer after the uh, killing of George Floyd and with the protests that were going on in the cities, um, I actually, um, with the Hamlin Undergraduate Student Congress organized a community discussion um, where students, faculty, staff, anyone who wanted to join could join and talk about what was going on and what we wanted to do. Um, and out of that, we created a, a wonderful statement um, about what was going on and ways people could could support the community, where they could get support from. Um, and we've done those types of things uh, several times throughout the year. And I've really learned through, I think, my overall experience at Hamlin, but starting in that first year seminar that having open and honest conversations is so important to being um, engaged in the community. And um, yeah, so I, that's something that I will continue to do beyond my time at Hamlin. And, you know, I, I work at Project for Pride and Living, a nonprofit, which is also lots to do with Anne, Jim, you and myself of how I landed there. But um, 
we do those types of things too. And so, you know, I get to hear about Minneapolis and St. Paul, and then I get to hear about Hamlin specific. And um, I think the thing that I've learned is just having open and honest uh, conversations with anyone who's wanting to do that or willing to do that. Um, Even if that means like you and I will just have one-on-one conversations several times. Um, So that's the, the specific example that came to my mind right away. Yeah, you, um, you, I like to talk a little bit about that. The question also made me think about civility and the two of you talked about openness. And last year or this year, last fall and in 2016, and, and my vice M was presidential election 2016 or 2020. Um, and, and I found it remarkable and, and part of being a citizen and being part of a community there are differences. And as you both expressed, being able to communicate and talk, but in the seminar this year, we did a straw poll um, and there were um, 12 for Biden. There were six for Trump, one libertarian and one green party. Um, but what I found remar- remarkable and Anne, you might, I remember in 2016 where we also we had President, Vice President Mondale for a day, but um, in both these years, and just in general with the FISEMs, people learned, uh, part of a civic skill is learning to listen, to understand differences, to appreciate that. And um, I remember in 2016, which was a hard election for some people in the class, and um, I wasn't surprised but the support, particularly some of the Trump people gave to some of the women in class was incredible. So the question is, um, we don't define civil enga- civic engagement narrowly. It's about being able to act and listen and work with a great variety of, of people. Um, and do you, I mean, it was amazing when yeah. to, to spend semester in some heated elections and working with the students. Mm-hmm. I mean, all, all of our FISEMs have been memorable in different ways, but 2016 and this past fall in particular, just being able to be in a space where we are really showcasing what it is to have open dialogue and create a safe space for sharing those um, perspectives that you know, not everyone is going to agree with or they're going to need some clarification to understand where folks are coming from. And just being able to see that small kind of subset of our campus population through each of those national elections was even just for me outside of being a staff member, but being a human being also navigating those elections. I'm so thankful to be in those courses because I can see students, you know, kind of looking around and thinking about things differently or just feeling that much more confident in their viewpoint because they're able to see it reinforced by their peers and everywhere in between. And it just is a really great showcase for what students can expect in their classrooms moving forward as well and what they should advocate for if they don't find that they're able to share those perspectives or they are in the minority viewpoint in a particular, again, whether it's a classroom or a community space, how do you make sure your voice is heard? How do you move forward your personal interests, agendas, you know, so that we can all come together and achieve so much more when it's, um, when it's that community focus. Um, yeah. yeah I, I, I love, and people, and there may be, we should take some of the questions, but I, I love the way people form a community or form teams. And this year with COVID, I mean, normally on an election night, I would be at some kind of gathering. Um, that wasn't the case. And the class, we checked in, the class wanted to, we were online together um, every hour instead of talking about what was happening. Um, and, and I do think in talking about civic engagement, it is about how do we build community? Um, and I see the FISEMs and you and Kai or one of you might wanna comment about, it's the city of St. Paul, but it's also learning to, um, form teams to work together um, and to form really good friendships and form community. 
Yeah, you you and I are like best friends now. I mean, I came into Hamlin as a first year student and really um, appreciated you's leadership as another student. And so, um, and then our friendship just continued to grow beyond just that mentorship. And, you know, we learn a lot from each other and uh, have some really great conversations and we're both involved in the community. So you's help, helping on a, a campaign for a St. Paul school board member. So we talk a lot about the parallels between St. Paul school board and the school board I'm running for. Um, and, you know, I still have several great friends from my FISEM and, you know, one of them is another one of my best friends and her sister works in education. So there's all these um, connections and, and um, it really helps us understand how we can create a strong uh, community that's open to discourse and, and discussion and um, learning and growing with each other. Yeah, I 100% agree with Kaya, and I see a lot of great questions coming in, so I'll keep it short. Um, <laughs> but Kaya and I, yes, are best friends now. We went from being me as a student leader, uh, helping her kind of navigate uh, as she was transitioning to Hamlin to now we call, text each other every week, and sometimes we just call and vent to each other about the things that are frustrating about campaigning. Uh, <laughs> um, but, you know, I think uh, a question that I asked Jim a while back, you know, because he is such, he is someone that everyone knows. If you mentioned Jim Scheibel, someone will know Jim. And every week I literally learn of a new thing that Jim was a part of, created, da, da, da. I'm just like, I never knew that. And I remember asking Jim, I was like, Jim, how do you do it? Like, how do you remember all these people, remember all these jobs that you did? Like, just remember all of it. It's just like, dear God, I came and I, I'm writing them down and I forget, you know? Like, how do you just remember all of it? And I remember Jim telling me, he's just like, you, when you're doing this work with people, when you're organizing next to them, when you're, you know, fighting for justice next to them, you never forget them. Um, those experiences live with you forever. And like when you're side by side with someone at a protest, side by side with someone um, advocating for, you know, like um, different uh, social justice issues, like those are experiences you never forget. And when he said that, I immediately thought of like Kaya, like, you know, like I'll never, like, you know, like 60, 70 years from now, you know, yeah, oh my God, I'll be a little, little wrinkly by then, you know, but like, you know, 60, 70 years from now, um, when I'm in really far in my career, I'll never forget Kaya and Kaya and I will probably stay in touch. And like, I can't imagine how many contacts I'll have 60 years from now, but I know that I'll remember all of them because I'll have a personal connection and I have formed a friendship with them. So it doesn't really matter how much time has passed when you're doing this work with someone, this hard work, you never forget them. And I think that's something that Jim taught me that's definitely represented here today with um, everyone here. So questions? Yeah, so, you know, actually, I had two questions that you've you've all sort of alluded to. I wanted to hear about how this FISM experience has maybe changed or informed how you handle disagreement, how you work through disagreement, and you've, and you've spoken about that. I also was curious about the pandemic, and Jim, you alluded to that as well, um, how COVID maybe has shifted the way the class is going. So those were two things that were top of mind for me, and thank you for asking them. And I should say, before I jump into other questions, we won't probably get to everybody's questions today. There are a few that really lend themselves to follow up. Um, so if we don't answer your question today, um, we would be happy to track down an answer or get into it via email too. And folks who have questions after alum at hamlin.edu. Um, here's one. Uh, how do you see FISM working with corporate America in the future, specifically regarding corporate engagement and civic issues? Yeah, I've been thinking about this a lot as my um position as the donations and engagement coordinator at a nonprofit and Hamlin being a nonprofit and how um, those partnerships can really form to work together. Um, one of the things we've been talking a lot about at Project for Pride and Living that I think also really applies to Hamlin is how we can include uh, people from corporate America in our open discussions um, and, you know, inviting different corporate groups or um people beyond just who are in the FISEM or beyond just local leaders to take part in those conversations. Um, and that's something that I think we probably already do a little bit um, 
that like I am not remembering like I'm sure I mean we all come from different backgrounds so I'm sure you know at least some person has a family member who works in corporate America and brings those perspectives but maybe it's bringing in those parents to class and talking with them or um, just different different ways uh, to bring in people from from different backgrounds and um, so yeah I think I've been thinking about that a lot in my like professional setting, but it could definitely really apply to uh, the first year seminars or just the larger Hamlin community opening up the conversations that we're having. And I'll say corporations obviously are a big part of St. Paul um, with 3M and Ecolabs, um, Securian, um, the health um, in institutes or the health places in St. Paul and um, John Pat um, so that's in looking at the city, um, including when it travels to the different wards, certainly one of the things we always look at is the role of businesses and particularly small businesses, entrepreneurs, but also the important role um, of corporations, um, including how important their philanthropy is for things like the Science Center, the Ordway, um, and so many things. So. Um, and Anne, that's probably we can work a few more corporate people in, but we definitely, and we do have business leaders that are part of the FISM. Mm -hmm. And something else that I really enjoy about how we structure FISM, because it's different every year, is we do at least some kind of informal poll of our students when they're joining the class to see what they are most interested in learning more about, what they're passionate about, what areas of the city they'd like to know more and so that can really inform the speakers that we bring in um so as these conversations continue absolutely jim we just continue to add to the roster of speakers and see how students interests shape the shape those conversations and we certainly cover the food in the city everything from the farmer's market to pierce <laughs> candy um the visit of the wards and food seems to be an ongoing subject or of interest that people share and talk about. Do you, can you talk a little bit about the interacting with council members and the preparation that you perhaps did before those meetings or even examples of questions that um, through the ward project that students asked those, those council members? Um, and I'm thinking specifically if there are folks who have never taken that step, but um, might want some advice about you know how how to interact even however practically or specifically you'd like to be how to interact with uh, their local representatives. Yeah, absolutely. I think for um, in terms of when I reached out to Rebecca about having an informational interview about you know interning or just like being more involved in local government, I think it's remembering that you know at the end of the day the representative you're talking to, whether it be local, state, federal, works for you. Like you know like they have a commitment to serve you. Um, and they made the promise that they'll do their best to represent you. So you reaching out to them and having this conversation, whether it be whatever issue that you want to talk about or just learning more about them, you know, this is an opportunity for them to meet you and you're allowing them to talk to you. And I think framing it that way makes it less intimidating because sometimes you're like, oh, you know, it's the city council member, uh, you know, and like, they're just people like, you know, like, um, and you know, I definitely had those like jitters too when I first met Rebecca, but now like I call her back, I'm just like, hey, rock star, uh, what do we need to do this week for the fellowship? And it's very casual. And just remembering that these people are human, they make mistakes, they have families, they have, you know, uh, other responsibilities outside their jobs, but they are here to serve you. Um, I would say too, you know, like when you're reaching out to representatives and having this conversation, um, don't be afraid to tell them what you think, you know, like, you know, like I, it can feel kind of, um, kind of off because there is a power dynamic between, you know, representatives and people. And sometimes you don't realize it until you're in a room with them. You're like, oh, I don't know if I want to bring up this issue now because um, they're the only one in the room or maybe they have a staff. So it's like two against one, um, you know, and sometimes it's a lot easier to have these conversations with multiple people. If you're really passionate about, you know, affordable housing per se, Kaya works for Project for Pride and Living. You know, every nonprofit in some way is uh, maybe has like some kind of uh, person on their staff who are particularly well-versed in like uh, political 
political lobbying or lobbying or just like uh, how to advocate for these policies. So if you're really passionate about certain policies, but you don't want to do it alone and have this conversation, it'd be great to just find a nonprofit, an organization, or even another person that does this work really well, um, whether it be housing or healthcare, or, um, you know, like uh, public safety, and just ha having um, participating and volunteering with that organization to try to make change. Um, and, you know, going about, um, you know, like, yeah, I've been going, I've been going about talking to elected representatives, like it's very much um, you allowing them to be um, to hearing you. And if you don't, you know, if you don't like their policies, and you like, don't um, agree with them, and like, that's okay, you know, like, that's a good opportunity to like, tell them what you think, because they do this uh, serve you. But you know, at the end of the day, if you don't see that they are living up to whatever they're preaching, whatever they're um, telling their constituents are doing, like, you know, like, they're more, you know, their actions aren't matching up to their words, like, that's, you know, that's, you know, like, that's fair game for you to like, take that knowledge that you have and take that experience to the polls, you know, and like reelect someone else, just because someone is an incumbent doesn't mean they deserve to be in that seat. It's no one's seat. It's the, it's the, our people seat. Who do we want in that seat to serve our people? All right. One second, you guys, I'm looking at our time. We've got just a few minutes left. Um, You know, before we, is there anything else? I think what I'll do is, is there anything else that you, um, any other advice that you might have for alums, um, either interested in learning more about the idea of St. Paul as a laboratory or their own sort of path? Um, we have just a minute or two if you wanted to offer anything, any sort of anything else along those lines. Yes. Uh, one of the things I'd say is to follow the Hamlin Undergraduate Student Congress on social media, um, because we do oftentimes have conversations that are open to the community or would love to have you come in and listen to what we're talking about on campus. And many times what we're talking about on campus applies beyond beyond our little part of St. Paul. Um, and so I would encourage you to follow that page and uh, reach out if you ever want to join a meeting or take part in a conversation. Um, there are many times where there's spaces to do that. Um, and then I would also say, like, just just do a do a search of something you're passionate about and find a nonprofit. Um, I didn't know what Project for Pride and Living was, and um, until I talked with Jim and Ann and you and um, and doing those quick little searches and just finding a nonprofit, maybe you'll find a volunteer opportunity that you'd really love to take part in or um, a co conversation they're having. Um, yeah, I would say just just think about the things you're passionate about and you value and you'll be able to find something out there for sure. Well, and Ann and I, people, Alums are certainly welcome to our class to come and share. I mean, a big part of community are the alums. So you certainly would be welcome to come to a class and even more so sort of share your experience. I bet there'd be people who would really enjoy that. Um, we've had some really great comments come through the chat in the Q&A as well. Um, and I just want all our panelists to know that and that we will capture those and share them. Um, and uh, like I said, a few questions that um, we can follow up by email. And if anybody has, you know, after today's talk, if anybody has anything they want to pass along to the panelists or a follow up question or any sort of comment or idea um, in the spirit of open discussion, we'd certainly love to we'd, we'd certainly love to hear them. Um, and alum at hamlin.edu is an easy way to send those along and we'd be happy to pass them to this group too. So um, before I say a few other things in closing, I just wanna thank all of you. Uh, it's such a pleasure to learn firsthand and to see firsthand the things that are really happening on campus. And uh, folks, this is a busy group of people uh, in April and May on a college campus. So I'm still uh, frankly sort of uh, surprised and extra grateful that we got all of your time today. Um, and I wish all of you the best uh, as, as you move into finals. Let's, uh, classes end next week. And then commencement is on May 8th. Uh, so 
thank you again to ever to all of our panelists for participating today. Um, couple little things for those of us uh, who are still here. Uh, we have a Hamlin trivia, another Hamlin trivia game on Thursday. I believe it's May 5th or May 6th, May 6th uh, at noon for those of you who'd like to play. This year's theme is, or this time's theme is uh, just hard questions, just really hard questions. That's, that's the big theme for our last trivia of the year. And I think I mentioned earlier that this was our eighth Leo lecture of the academic year. So we will be moving into planning phase and looking for new topics, um, speakers, suggestions. So if, if any of anybody has any ideas for us, please send them our way, um, and we'd love to we'd love to to track those down. And uh, panel, thank you again. I think it might be great in the fall to do a little little write up, a little recap that we can put in social media or in some of our alumni newsletters, and and just do a little track back for those. Uh, for alums who, who want to learn more about what all the good work you're doing. And with that, I think we'll end the Zoom. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Everybody have a great day.